Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. The part of what I'm going to do is just going to kind of give you an overview of where we are uh, this year, a couple of highlights, um, and then answer your questions um, about student events that we have coming up at the end of the year, um, clarification questions, things that you think maybe I should clarify for even maybe the broader community, and then just a little bit about what I think is going to happen next fall and open it up to a, a Q&A. So you should see my presentation there. I'm going to make it larger. Okay. So one thing that's kind of cool, it's going to be rolled out on Spring Fest, which um, for our cohorts, we have two Spring Fest. It's going to be a very, if you've been involved with Spring Fest over the years, it's uh, going to be completely modified. Hopefully next year we'll be back in action with all the carnival atmosphere that we have, but it, it's going to be fun. There'll be games, uh, there'll be yearbook signing. We might even be able to roll out some ice cream um, and we're going to do a countdown with everybody, but it's going to be a, an assembly B day. So we go to classes um, periods one through eight. And then for the last hour, a little bit hour or so of the school day, we'll have Spring Fest. And one thing that's going to be rolled out, and I want to thank the Music Production Club, which is made up with, you know, maybe 10 or 15 students with Mr. Ennis. Uh, they've come together and made a, a Bruin theme song called It's a Great Day to Be a Bruin. And that's going to be rolling out on Spring Fest. And kids had a lot of fun with it. The faculty and staff who um, went to the recording studio, and you can see Miss Mosier in the back there recording part of the rap song. And it's going to be all put together. And I think we'll probably be able to get you know, four or five years out of it um, at games and events and um, student student activities. It's going to be a lot of fun, but that's coming up at Spring Fest. I think the kids are going to enjoy that. And if we get the costume, we'll roll out the actual Bruin, uh, but we'll see. Um, we had our senior lawn signs uh, distributed. Thank you again to PTSA for helping with that. I think that's probably a tradition that we're just going to continue with. Um, I think many high schools will continue with it. And um, thank to Nancy Beck Fund for donating the funds for that um, event. Oops. Uh, okay. We also had our senior decision day and I wanna thank the counseling department and Ms. Stern for really taking that on. We had students who are going into the military, uh, going into uh, the electric electrician field. Um, we had students who are going to two-year schools, four-year schools, people celebrating. They come to the counseling office. They filled out a sheet saying, I decided and whatever they decided to do with themselves for next year, or we had some gap years as well. And then they posted it up and got a little, um, some goodies from the counseling department. It was fun. Seniors enjoyed it. We didn't get to do any of this last year. So it was nice to have a little normalcy and, and celebrate that on our different cohort days. One thing that uh, many of you know, we had a lot of different um, opportunities with AP exams this year. We had 24 different AP exams being um, administered. Oops. Uh, three language exams, and we administered them at central office for the first time. I think the students and the faculty really enjoyed having them over there. It's very quiet, not displacing teachers from other classrooms and Students, once they got there, I think they found it to be a pretty uh, nice environment to do their testing, and we're probably going to continue that even after COVID. Um, we have three exam periods. 13 exams were given in the traditional time period of May 3rd through the 14th. 10 exams were given over the 17th through the 28th. Uh, and one exam was offered during the new AP period, which is June 3rd. Uh, which hasn't taken place yet, but that's AP site. That'll be on June 3rd um, at four o'clock. Uh, most of our exams were traditional paper pencil. We had three that were digital, but overall, even the digital exams, except we haven't done psych yet, but the other two digital exams, um, knock on wood, went really well. We had no real major issues um, and that they were all at school taking them when it was very helpful. Also, thank you to Nancy Beck Grant when you're allowed to come back into the school and walk around, hopefully next year with a more of a traditional open house or uh, 
uh, hybrid open house slash um, Zoom in for parents as well. We don't know exactly what we're going to do yet for open house, but you'll be able to see some of the new artwork that we've posted along the building um, in the hallways. Uh, these portraits came from one of our studio art classes. Um, all sorts of headshots of a variety of diverse people and hung up through the hallways that, that can represent more of our student body and just were really nice and have decorated the halls um, incredibly well. And I want to thank Nancy, the Nancy Beck Fund again and Dave Beck for all of his support when it comes to artwork. Started when I was even at French Road, putting things up and getting money to frame the artwork. And we're going to continue it at the high school as well. And we have a grant from the Nancy Beck Fund for this summer to put together actual photos of students. And we're making a um, kind of a inclusive um, uh, culture climate uh, collage of pictures of all of our students and faculty that we're putting together from yearbook. And we're going to do a huge frame and put that out somewhere in the main area. So this year with um, our students and grades, uh, it was definitely difficult, as especially when we started the first quarter. I think there were a lot of um, students who were trying to get used to this hybrid schedule, students who were doing full remote school, who struggled at times. Um, not everybody, of course, but when you look at our, our rates, um, you know, since I started back at Brighton in the high school in 2012, um, our failure rate was about 14%. Um, prior to that, 16, 15%. And we can, we, for the most part, went down throughout the years. And then in 1920, had one of our lowest failure rates where one or more students, uh, or uh, one or more students failed one or more classes. 8.6% um, of our student body did. That doubled the first quarter of our school year this year to almost 17% of students failing one or more classes. Uh, the higher percentage was certainly in the remote area, but we had a lot of hybrid kids failing as well. When you look at quarter two, um, we weren't, we didn't double the failure rate, but we were up four or five percentage points compared to we were, where we were in 1920. Um, it wasn't as high as it was back in the 10, 11, 11, 12 school years, but 17% was pretty high for us in quarter two. Between quarter one and quarter two, we implemented a lot of um, interventions. We actually started to bring in kids on their asynchronous days who weren't doing well, needed some extra time in our support center, maybe studying in the library during their schoolwork. Um, and when you look at quarter three, um, which our grades you know, just recently came out, 179 students failed one or more out of 1,200 plus students. That was 14.8% of our student body, which is pretty much right in line with where we were in 1819. Um, in the 1920 school year, that's right when we closed. So the numbers really don't make sense um, when we closed last year for COVID. But when you look back at 1819, 17, 18, we're much more in a similar uh, number. And I attribute that to a lot of you know, students getting used to their schedules, teachers doing a lot of work and themselves getting used to the schedule and the hybrid mode. Um, our rates of failures for remote students came down from 36%. It was still in the 20s. Um, but, you know, a lot of students who needed to be remote for <clears throat> health reasons or family health reasons, it probably wasn't the best environment for them to be remote. Um, but we're hoping to get them back for summer school in person and to get them on track as we start the school year. And, and when you look at kind of the summary, so almost 15% of our students had one or more failures third quarter, 27% of those were remote, 12.7% of those were hybrid. And again, with the remote students, we had fewer failing than we did in the fall, uh, but we did bring back several students um, who were remote in the fall who came back to the high school. and. Many kids thrived in the remote world, um, but you know, from what you can see, certainly being in the school for many of our kids would be much better. And we're hoping that with a robust summer school program um, that these kids can come um, be with fewer kids, but also get on track and be ready for next fall. So tons of events coming up. If you have, a, if you have seniors or you have juniors, I did send out some emails this morning kind of summarizing again what we're doing for ball and prom and bash and banquet. 
Uh, if you haven't heard, I told the students, but it, it's, it's gonna make life a lot easier for those events because we're not over 500 people now. Before it was 200 people, but now it's 500. We don't have to do all the testing or requirements of COVID uh, documentation, whether they had a vaccination or they had COVID at one point. We don't have to do any of that for ball, prom, bachelor, banquet, just for graduation. So that takes out a lot of stress for students and staff to put all that together. Um, our award ceremony is coming up on the 17th. Um, we have a seven o'clock seniors and a six o'clock juniors. Parents were notified if your children are receiving any sort of an award. Um, again, we don't have to do testing. We just have to go in and you'll do a health screening when you arrive and that's it. There will be two large tents going up in the back of the school between the stadium and the back of the building. Um, those will be up for almost two weeks for all of our events. Um, rain or shine, it'll be happening underneath the tents. Uh, let's see. Parents have been working a lot with PTSA in the planning of the, ba the bash this year. I think it's going to be great. Um, the banquet's going to be catered by our food service, but um, the options are not uh, under the guidelines of the federal government and food, uh, school lunch program, so they can you know, serve a lot of different uh, types of options and we're gonna do that. Ice cream, social, kids don't make their own Sunday, but they'll have it made to order right as they go through a line. Um, our Spring Fest is going to be on the 18th and the 21st for students with a lot of fun and games, um, activities that we're planning, but it's gonna be just the last hour or so of the school day, executive council's helping to put that together. And going back to Bash and Banquet, it will be the traditional hypnotist and all sorts of other games and activities that we have normally done, but we'll be outside. <clears throat> Let me kind of wrap up with our junior prom and then head into the last few days of school with uh, the Regents exams, the first one being on the June 17th for English. No classes will take place on that day, but any juniors who've opted to take that test can come in, they'll take it. And then our last day of classes on the 18th and 21st, Spring Fest. And then we start exams on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, again, optional for those students who are in living environment, uh, algebra, or earth science. Graduations on Tuesday, the 22nd, on the turf, rain date of June 23rd. And we're asking for our seniors to turn in all of their laptop devices before the end of the school year so that we can, you know, pass those on to students um, who need them. Usually they're for kids who need a repair to their own laptop. They'll get one of these uh, senior laptops. So we do need those back. And when you look at the map for graduation, um, we've kind of mapped out, we'll have parking because you know how parking can be at open house. There's parking at French Road. And we'll have buses running, three buses running to bring people to and from graduation. The church right next door to the high school lot will be open for parking. We're parking cars on the grass, parking cars at central office, and of course in our own high school lot. Everybody will have to enter through these, the central area, which is by door 20. Family will be seated in 150 square foot boxes along the turf. And the students are all going to be sitting in front of the stadium, which is acting as the stage. And they'll be walking all the way across the stage, two pictures, one with me, one by themselves without a mask. Um, and it should be about an hour and 15 or so ceremony. We've cut out some things. We don't have live music, so it should be a little quicker this year. And we'll have a big jumbotron for people sitting in the back so you can see everything that's going on. So with all of that shared, I'm gonna stop my screen and do a Q&A and you can certainly throw questions into the um, chat. I don't see any in there yet, but um, so questions you wanna throw in there and then I'll, if we can unmute and you can ask your questions. But as far as next fall goes, um, right now, uh, Dr. McGowan and I are actually participating in a, um, it's a, put on by the Greece superintendent who is the Monroe County superintendent chair. And so it's superintendents and, and some high school principals coming together to hopefully give the state our own guidance of what we hope we can do in the fall and 
certainly that means reopening five days a week with everybody here. Um, not sure about remote options yet or not, but reopening full go five days a week and putting in some protocols certainly in place, but also um, looking at our vaccination rates of uh, staff, of students, now that we can, you know, students 12 to and up can be vaccinated. Um, I don't know anything about what, what the state might mandate or not, but um, we are anticipating a pretty normal school year coming into the fall. And that's what I think we all want and we're, we're pushing for that. So hopefully we'll be coming up with some plans and getting some state guidance uh, shortly. So I see a question in the chat, uh, going back to graduation, are graduation tickets transferable? Um, so number one, the, so we, we did make a change now that the state has relaxed some of the masking uh, guidelines, even though for graduation, we'll still be requiring everyone to wear a mask because that's what the state says. Um, with some of the relaxing of the numbers for outside events, Every student gets six tickets um, with their name on it. So there's six non-transferable tickets. Um, each family will get six and we can comfortably fit six people in each of the 150 square foot areas that we will mark out. Yes, there might be some families with two, three or four people in a 150 square foot block, um, bringing their own seats, of course. Um, and then you'll have families with six. However, with how we mapped out the turf, pretty much we can get all 300 families, um, so 300 students with six tickets each, can sit right on the turf itself. We are going to open up to families who would like more than six tickets to request them, and we will give you tickets that uh, you can you can. I'm not going to say a number, but hopefully within reason, we'll give families additional tickets to the six. They will not have the student's name on them. Um, and then those extra family members can sit behind, you know, the, the main six family members for the 300 students who would have family members come. And if they really want to be there, they can sit behind them um, on the track and on the visitor stadium. Again, there'll be a jumbotron and you'll be able to see it. Um, on the jumbotron throughout the event. So we will allow more guests to come than just the six. Um, but the six tickets with names on them are not transferable. They are for the families to sit in that one coned off area. And then the other tickets will be for people behind them. The tents that are being set up, um, we will allow students as soon as they are up, rain or shine, to eat lunch out there and to be out there uh, just like on any other nice day where students can go outside or during flex. If it's raining, they can go out now underneath the tents and sit, have lunch, or be out there in a free period. Um, uh, on their off days, probably not. We still have to keep the cohorts in check. So if a student has an asynchronous day, if they get permission from their counselor to come in, that's how we've worked this. If they've really wanted to come in to work in the library or work in a more structured environment, um, we can set that up to do that. We haven't talked about students being outside during that time, but that's probably something we can work out as long as we know they're coming. Um, we don't have any statistics on students whose grades were lower, um, such as the C's and D's. But for the end of the year, anticipating that we might have some lower grades for students, um, we're doing away with all of our minuses and students who would have fallen into a C minus, B minus, or an A minus range for the year will automatically be, be bumped up to an A, B, or C. Um, we don't have D minus. So, uh, and they can still get pluses, but the minuses are gone. So we're hoping for the final grades of the year that will help alleviate some of those uh, maybe lower grades, um, but I don't have any stats on that right now. Um, let's see, can you go over the procedures for graduation in terms of coming to BHS before graduation verify? Yes. So starting at one o'clock on the 22nd, families can come to the school. Um, we would prefer, we can't take documentation for guests who aren't there to verify that it's them. Um, when they share the documentation. So if they're going to pre 
pre-register that night and get pre-screened, they have to come to school between one and five o'clock on the day of graduation. They're basically going to drive through like we did for that one testing day back in, uh, I don't know if it was November after Thanksgiving when we had to do testing. Um, you'll drive through, the nurses will collect paperwork, they will review the paperwork. If everyone who wants to come to graduation has either their vaccination in place, they have uh, a doctor's note saying that they had COVID in the last three months, or that they um, will do a rapid test. We'll do the rapid test right there um, and the results we'll get in 15 minutes and we'll only call you if it's positive. We will sign off the health questionnaire form and then the night of graduation, you're gonna bring that form with the graduation ticket and hand those to the check-in tables and then and you'll fill out the health screening information that day that you're feeling okay to come in. And as long as you have the other things signed, you'll be able to get in a little quicker. For people who don't pre-register or don't pre-screen, um, they're gonna come in. We'll have to check the paperwork right there. You'll need to have your COVID documentation with you if you didn't do that earlier. Um, otherwise, um, you'll have the paper that was signed earlier in the day and you don't need to bring your COVID uh, vaccination card with you um, or any other uh, piece of evidence. You, you just will bring your form that's signed. But if you don't, you do have to bring those piece of evidence with you. It all gets checked. If you need a test, you need to go in and get tested. You'll have to wait 15 minutes for the result and then you can join the family out on the turf. Um, but it will be similar to what we did in November where cars drove through. We'll check people off as quickly as we can, but this is the protocol we'll have to follow. Um, and we, you will be able to get in faster and we're opening, you know, graduation doesn't start till seven. We're starting one o'clock for screening and we're gonna start letting people into the stadium at five. Um, so we're hoping we won't have long, long lines and things will be able to be kind of broken down throughout the day to get everybody in by the start of the ceremony at seven. Um, seatings first come first serve on the turf in terms of where you're going to sit on the cones. Again, there's 150 square foot areas that'll be kind of measured off with a cone and with the lines of the football lines that we're using on the field. And um, families will be able to pick a section to sit in with their six members. And then if there's extra guests, they'll be able to sit behind the coned off areas in other areas up on the visitor side. Um, basically any chairs that you would normally bring to a sporting event that you're watching on the sidelines for lacrosse or soccer, football, anything that you'd be watching from the sidelines and watching your children uh, on a Saturday or Sunday during an event or a weeknight where they're playing some sort of uh, game that's not on turf and no bleachers and you're sitting on the sidelines watching, those camping chairs with the round edges, things that don't poke through the grass, those are pretty much going to be the same kind of chairs that you could bring to graduation. You can also bring blankets and sit on blankets. And even if there's people in front of you in chairs and you're on blankets, the way that the seating will work, you'll still be able to see the stadium and people walking across the stadium seating and the jumbotron. Um, so the, a, the Flex A and Flex B schedule, because we're not coming back five days. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Assembly B schedule, that's what you meant. So yes, with our Assembly B schedule for Spring Fest, that means Flex is eliminated. So on that day, students will have to eat during a free period in the cafeteria or the gym um, or make other arrangements or eat uh, the last period of the day, which would be typically our eighth period, but now it'll be 145. Um, so they could eat during the actual Spring Fest time, um, but there will not be a flex on the Assembly B Day schedule. So all the classes are shortened, there's no flex, and basically the flex becomes part of the end of day assembly, along with other minutes that we pulled from every class to make it a little bit over an hour. So there won't be a flex on that day, but you, they can eat outside um, or in the gym or cafeteria on that day for Spring Fest. Um, uh, 
students who want to come in to school to study or to work out underneath the tents, um, they would just need to notify us if it was on their asynchronous days. Um, so if our graduation gets moved to Wednesday, most likely we would move the screening to Wednesday as well. And the reason we would have to do that is the rapid tests are only good for six hours before the event. So that's why we can start at one if the event starts at seven. That's, that's the New York State protocol. So with our rapid COVID tests, we would have to move everything to Wednesday, the screening and graduation and the pre-screening activities. I am really hoping that the weather is going to be great and there's not going to be any chance of rain. Um, but, you know, we'll know when we get closer and we'll probably have to make a call. If the weather looks good, maybe on Sunday we'll make a call and just say it looks like everything's going to play out. We're doing graduation Tuesday, screening on Tuesday, everything. If it looks like it could be iffy, we might have to wait until um, Monday, Monday afternoon to make the final call. Um, and I would say that would probably be the latest and we'll let people know either way if we're doing it on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so the stage for graduation is actually the stadium. So we're gonna be putting a, a kind of a riser on the walkway of the stadium. If you've ever been in the home side underneath the press box, there's a long walkway. We're going to put risers up so when students actually get their diploma, They'll be standing above, so probably the railing will be about their at about their knees. So you'll see most of their body from the knees up. It'll be on the jumbotron. Uh, we'll be able to give them their diploma. All the speakers will be up on a podium on, up above the the stadium, and the entire stadium is that's pretty much what our stage is. All the dignitaries, faculty, administrators will be sitting on the bleachers. The students will be facing the bleachers. Um, and in three big uh, boxes, A through G, H through O, P through Z, similar to what we've done at the uh, RIT. And then we'll call them up group by group to get their diplomas and they'll, they'll process in, in groups, just like we would in a normal graduation. They'll recess out just like we would in normal graduation. And they're gonna get in lines behind the stadium um, behind the press box, between the school and the press box, where we have graduation rehearsal Tuesday morning. And so we'll practice once around, um, but it'll look just like a regular ceremony if you've ever been to the ceremonies at RIT, except we're going to be outside and on the turf. Um, would anybody like to unmute themselves? I think I answered all the questions in the chat. Feel free. Tom, how can remote students participate in Springfest? Are you saying in a remote way or if they could come to school on that yeah, day? Yeah, if they can come in. They can come in. Um, we'll certainly welcome them to be here, um, to participate even in that last hour. Uh, so if any student on the, and I would say it would be their, what would be their normal cohort day and if you feel there's enough students, because we were trying to think about uh, how to manage that, but to say that the any remote student who wanted to come to the high school at 145 on what would be their cohort day, wherever their alpha falls, they could sign in at the um, security desk and then participate in all the activities outside. And again, we're hoping, well, the yearbooks rolled out. The yearbooks have already come in, which is awesome compared to when it was last year. They didn't get here till, I mean, didn't get here till end of August. Um, so we're excited that the yearbooks will be here. Seniors will get them on a bash and banquet night. And then students will start getting them the week after. And then they'll have them for Spring Fest if they want to continue with signatures and things like that. So I am going to send out an e-news about remote students in Spring Fest, grades 9 through 12. And certainly our seniors who are remote, who want to do ball, bash, banquet, and juniors who want to do prom can certainly still do that. Everything's electronic. They're signing up for tickets electronically, and they just got to show up that night. And as long as they've purchased their tickets and they have their contract, um, they can participate just like everybody else. But for Spring Fest, I'll put out a note about how to do that on the 18th and the 21st. 
And the cool thing, usually we only have our seniors go out on the turf on the last day of school to count down the last 10 minutes of school. I think what we're going to do this year is invite any students who want to out on the turf um, and we'll count down for the whole half a student body cohort who's there on each day, the 21st and the 18th. Any other questions? Um, we're pretty sure because we don't have any final exams that we'll be able to get everything wrapped up and grades will probably be posted to the final grades will be posted to the portal um, by June 30th. Um, and then we'll be mailing out final report cards home. And there'll be a letter also with the report cards that if your child took a Regents exam and they did really well and you want the grade to be on their transcript, you can request the grade to be put on their transcript. Otherwise, the default method will be every kid gets an exempt for a Regents, even if they took it unless they request us to put it on the transcript. Um, that was probably the easiest way for us to try to manage that process um, and not have grades automatically go on the transcript and people not know it and maybe you don't want it on there. Um, but for the kids who do want their grades, if they scored really well, they want it on their transcript, it's not gonna count towards GPA, it's not gonna do anything grade-wise, but it'll be there You know, if you think that might help with a college who might look at 95 on the Regents and be good, you know, I can't say if that's going to give them any up or not, but uh, that'll be an option for parents to have that grade put on if you'd like. Otherwise, it would be very clear that the students will all get an EX for exempt. Anything else? I was listening to the board meeting last night. Sounds like Council Rock, French Road, they're all doing a variety of field trips, um, getting kids out still, uh, going to the Genesee Country Museum and French Road. The second graders are taking a trip to French Road. The middle school kids are going to Seabreeze. So seems to be a, a nice, uh, somewhat of a normal end to the school year. And with all of our activities that we're doing, even though they're all getting smashed into one month in June, when normally prom would be in April, Ball and bash and would be in May, and then we have graduation at Spring Fest um, a little bit later on. Uh, you know, we're going to manage. June's going to be busy. Anything else? Yeah, the getting everybody on the buses um, to transport over was going to be somewhat of an issue. Um, so we're hoping to bring back that tradition next year. So if the kids miss it at Council Rock or miss it at French Road, we're actually next year, we're supposed to do it in 2020. We're going to go to Council Rock, French Road and the middle school with our seniors. So we'll bus them to Council Rock and French Road. And then when we get back to the high school, we're gonna drop them off at the middle school and then parade through the middle school next year. So even though students are gonna miss this year's seniors, they will be able to see um, everybody except I guess th this current eighth grade class will be able to see everybody um, next year. So our plan is to do the class of 2022 in every building. Um, that was supposed to happen in 2020, but obviously that did not. Um, Let me see. So final exams, there are no traditional final exams. There may be some half year courses like economics or law and government wrapping up some sort of in class like final unit test, but traditional final exams will not be happening this year. Um, and only four Regents exams are being given um, and all the other Regents exams are canceled. So once students are kind of done with their classwork for fourth quarter, that's it. So the grades will be based on four quarters this year. There'll be no final exams mixed into the grade. Uh, the senior nights have been great. We have uh, lacrosse, boys lacrosse tonight. 
and uh, track and girls across uh, girls across last Saturday track last night and I believe golf is coming up maybe on Thursday um, so there are a lot of these sports and end of your senior nights are happening it's always fun to to see everybody Okay, if you do have any questions down the road or things pop up, please don't hesitate to send me a note. Um, Robin and Jackie, I'll see if I can get Dan to help me get this recording out so we can put it up, um, at least the recording of it for people to use. And thank you to PTSA again for, uh, you're gonna do a nice thing for the faculty end of the year. I do really appreciate it. I know they will too. Perfect. You know, we're happy to do it or to be able to do it. Yes. Yeah, no, that's very nice. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And next year, when we have our PTSA meetings, um, one thing we're going to continue is to do a Zoom. And we'll probably do in person meetings again, but we'll have a Zoom option right there. So if parents are at work and they can't come to the school, um, I think it's been helpful and we'll, we'll open it up and at least you'll be able to listen in and ask questions uh, from wherever you are at noon um, or in the evenings. So, okay. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.